as if it was a Laura Craft story, the rare works section of the National Library of Brazil jealously guards a strange ten-page document, baptized with the suggestive name of Manuscript 512. It tells an 18th-century expedition during which the ruins of an ancient city that seemed to have developed a classical Mediterranean-style civilization were discovered. There is a hard controversy regarding its truthfulness, but Manuscript 512 was fascinating enough to be interested in two famous 19th century scholars, Sir Richard Burton and Percy Fawcett. It all started in 1839, when a naturalist named Manuel Ferreira Lagos, found that unusual piece lacking explicit and titled authorship, in the style of the time, historical relationship of hidden human, and the great ancient settlement without residence, which was discovered in the year 1753. Delivered to the Brazilian Historical and Geographical Institute, its official magazine published a copy with a contextual explanation about the 18th century in which it told the story of the Bandeirants, adventurers who went into the jungle to hunt slaves or make a fortune who went in search of alleged mines found in the early 16th century by Muir Rebecca, with this nickname the descendant of a shipwrecked man by the Indians called Diogo Alvarez Correa. In that first half of the 19th century Brazil had just become independent from Portugal and, as is often the case in these cases, it needed foundations that supported the new nation, mixing historical and mythological elements, for that reason Manuscript 512 as that stranger had been baptized document, was taken for good. The fact that at that time they began to discover old pre-Hispanic cities forgotten encouraged to find something similar in Brazilian territory that gave the newborn state as a previous culture, instead of the simple and primitive Amazonian tribes. According to Manuscript 512, which is written as if it were a kind of newspaper over ten years, an expedition of Portuguese bandeirants entered the certain, a vast region of northeastern Brazil, in search of the mines of the aforementioned Muribeca. With that objective they had left a few missions centuries ago but never found anything except some precious stones that only excited the imagination. The fact is that looking for that Brazilian version of El Dorado, the expeditionaries ran into an old city eaten by the undergrowth that broke with everything known for those latitudes, large buildings, paved roads, arches, reliefs, statues, they even spotted a canoe with two men of white complexion and dressed in the European who fled abruptly. The enigmatic text of the manuscript is completed with some curious details, such as the review of having found a bag with gold coins that were inscribed with the silhouette of an archer and a crown, or the reproduction of some hieroglyphs copied from various corners of the city to some see some resemblance to Greek and Phoenician letters. With all this, and taking into account the aforementioned situation of the search for an ancestral identity for Brazil, some expeditions were organized that, following the story, tried to find the fabulous city. The most important was the one that came out in 1840 under the command of Canon Boninho José de Carvalho e Guna who, after gathering a lot of testimonies from people who had traveled the region, and using six years of effort, found absolutely nothing but talk that they made the matter even more fanciful, in the case of references to a dragon that guarded the place. The priest had not yet returned when in 1848 a soldier named Manuel Rodriguez de Oliveira also left in search of the unknown city and returned with the same negative result. The illusion that had unleashed that story was beginning to crumble. It is not known what source this peculiar adventurer used to search for Zed, but he also carried the manuscript 512 because another British ex-consul claimed to have seen a city that responded to the description of the document. From the expedition, in which also the son of Fawcett and a friend of this were going, it was never known and only recently that some objects were found that they carried with them, in any case, since then its mysterious disappearance displaced the city of the manuscript in interest. For more than a quarter century, scientists and the general public have updated their view of the Americas before European contact. The plains and the eastern forests were not a wilderness, but a patchwork of gardens, they've found. The continents were not vast uninhabited expanses but a bustling network of towns and cities. Indigenous people, we've learned, altered the ecology of the Americas as surely as the European invaders did. For more than 8,000 years, people lived in the Amazon and farmed it to make it more productive. 
they favored certain trees over others, effectively creating crops that we now call the cocoa bean and the Brazil nut, and they eventually domesticated them. And while many of the communities who managed these plants died in the Amerindian genocide 500 years ago, the effects of their work can still be observed in today's Amazon rainforest. People arrived in the Amazon at least 10,000 years ago, and they started to use the species that were there. And more than 8,000 years ago, they selected some individuals with specific phenotypes that are useful for humans, says Carolina Levis, a scholar at Wageningen University who helped lead the study. They really cultivated and planted these species in their home gardens, in the forests they were managing, she said.